African Liberation Day 2017, Friday and Saturday, May 26th and 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, 315 West Warren Avenue. This year's theme, Reparations, Resistance, Rebellion, Liberation Through Education. Don't miss this two-day event, African Liberation Day 2017, May 26th and Saturday, May 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. This event is free. Hello, my brothers and my sisters. This is Brother Paul Taylor, and I'm here today, yes I am, in support of X marks the spot, Brother Lawrence X and his lovely wife. It's our privilege to come to you to bring you information and, and, and knowledge that you need as we are now getting prepared and ready for this year's celebration of African Liberation Day, 44 years today. But you know, it takes people to do anything, and we've been blessed to have some people that have been in our support down through the years. And one of those persons we're honoring in a special way here today. You know, you never know what you don't know until you find out what you don't know. <laughs> and I certainly never knew that our brother Chester Vaughn, yes, brother Chester Vaughn, the man who gave us Blackness, Un Blackness Unlimited, he was a teacher hey, at well, Northeastern High School. So. <laughs> <laughs> he was a teacher at Northeastern High School. And one of his prime students, one of his students who you would never have thought such as it is, is here today, vice president of this glorious station, a major player here, and we're honored to have him sitting at the table with us today, y'all. Everybody know. Henry yeah, Tyler, y'all, is go. in the house. There you go. You know, Henry Tyler, he kind of ties you up. He's so special. <laughs> and the brother's been special to me and so many of us down through the years. And to find out his affiliation and association with Chester, Chester Vaughn. <laughs> Can we do this? Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Vaughn, uh, I, I want to take this opportunity to thank you because back in the day when I was um, attending Northeastern High School, okay, uh, you were one of my teachers and you were an inspiration to me and I, I just wanted to let you know and give you, uh, pay homage to you. Well, that was a good job. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and I enjoyed you did, it. You did an excellent <laughs> job and I, I just want to thank you for all the knowledge and all the inspiration that you gave to me when I was, was attending Northeastern High School. Thank you. Hey, hey, it was a pleasure for me to do that. All right. Okay. Can I, can I ask, how, how did you get started as far as wanting to be a teacher? Oh, well, I had the experience of uh, going to Pershing High School. Mm -hmm. First of all, they put me in a general program. And after my mother found out that I was in the general program, she came up there and raised a little H, okay, and <laughs> yeah. got me into the college prep mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. And from that, um, changed my curriculum, changed my perspective. And so at that point, I felt it was necessary for me to go to school, go to college. I went to Eastern Michigan, which is a teacher's college. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got started, okay? And so it was a matter of uh, what field I wanted to go into. Right. So I went into uh, science and math, basically physics and chemistry, mm -hmm. and a major in uh, math. So that's really how I got started. And through the trials and tribulations of being able to graduate, <laughs> and it wasn't easy, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, so when I graduated, I got a teacher's certificate. Mm -hmm. So teacher's certificate led me to uh, Northeastern eventually. Okay. And mm -hmm. so that's how it all started. 
got to Northeastern and met some students who really were into the red, black, and green mm -hmm. Garveyism, and, and so they wanted to Africanize their community. Okay. So in order to do so, they needed a symbol. Mm -hmm. So I put out the symbol of black dignity. Okay. In the red, black, and green flag. Is, and this, that's, is this it here? Yes, that's it. Okay. Right. That's the whole beginning of it. And from that, and we traveled across the country. Every shop that I saw that was black, mm -hmm. we put in decals and buttons and flags. Right. So that's right. really how it really got started. Now, not only uh, were you a a teacher, uh, I, I guess you you could call I, I would call you an entrepreneur extravaganza, <laughs> you know, because uh, throughout, throughout the years that I've known you, I mean I, I would. Uh, go to concerts and 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 I see Chester Vaughn. I'd go, oh. you know, walking down the street. I see <laughs> Chester Vaughn. He he had all these products that he would um, uh, be would be selling. Could could you give us a little history on on uh, your entrepreneurship? Well, that started with the red, black, and green decal flags. I crossed the country two, three times: Boston, New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta. San Francisco, uh, L.A., distributing the red, black, and green. Mm -hmm. So that's how it got started. After that, we wound up doing uh, concerts, right? Mm -hmm. doing uh, the Funkadelics, mm -hmm. Earth, Wind, and Fire, Peebo Bryson, the OJs, and merchandising each of these. No prints? <laughs> oh, well, we're going to get to prints. <laughs> In fact... Uh, that was when Prince came out with um, Party Like It's 1999. Mm -hmm. We were there partying with Prince in okay. 1999. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, we can't leave out the, the King. Mm -hmm. We did Michael Jackson, and um, this is how the merchandising and the advertising. We did the promotions. Our partner, Billy Sparks, mm -hmm. we did the uh, promoting. And I did the merchandising. Okay. So basically, that's how we got started. One thing led to another. Then we met Miss uh, Miss Willis. Miss Willis. Mm -hmm. Well, we did things for her. And after that, anybody that had a company that wanted an image, uh, we provided it. Okay. The concept, whatever the concept was, we visualized it. Right. By promoting our product. Also, we helped uh, elect. Obama twice. Okay. <laughs> we yeah. did Obama buttons mm -hmm. and merchandise. Mm -hmm. right. So, I mean, throughout the years, uh, Chester Vaughn has is, is, is just been all in uh, any type of uh, uh, business opportunities. Yeah, is, is that correct? Yeah. 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 And, and you know what's also correct is that Brother Chester <coughs> Vaughn, who we love and respect, has been one who was willing to share to share his knowledge, his information. Mm -hmm. uh, we started a youth group at the Inner City Sub Center. Uh, they had uh, the T-shirts or sweatshirts that he put together for them. He showed them how to use the silk screen machinery and to be able to do their own shirts and what mm -hmm. have you. Because, see, he was one who understood that we need to spread the information. We need to share the information. Mm -hmm. Some are so tight-fisted and so tight-minded, they don't want to tell you or show you right. what's being done and how to do it. But that never was Chester Bond. Chester has always been one who understood that if we were going to grow, if we're going to really be somebody, then we need to share information and help others. And he would do that. He would do that right down in the basement of Inner City Sub Center where we set up the whole operation of sh shirt producing and mm -hmm. other things. And he'd bring some of the young people down and actually show them how to do it right. and give them right. an opportunity to learn. And that's what's been always a special, special thing about Brother Chester. He wanted to give, just not take, he wanted to also give. Reach one, teach one. Each right. one, teach one. Yeah. And that's, and that's yeah. what he's done, and that's what he's famous for. Mm -hmm. And we've been honored to have him as a part of our inner city sub center family, a part of our Kibalon village, our, what we call ourselves, the Mid Man alumni, alumni. family. Mm -hmm. He's been a part of our family uh, down through the years, and his wife and family has been a part of it as well. And so we're honored to honor him today. Uh, he's a brother who kind of sometimes is kind of in the background, maybe in the minds of some, 
but uh, he's been in the forefront for many of us, and we love him, we respect him, and we're glad that he is who he is, mm -hmm. and he is and will always be a leader and a teacher in our community. Uh, Mr. Vaughn, uh, we've got about three minutes left. Uh, okay. I'm going to turn it over to you for at least a couple of them because I want to make an announcement about the Northeastern reunion uh, that they have every year. Mm -hmm. But I'm turning it over to you for the next two minutes if, if you have some comments that you'd like to make. Well, basically, uh, from one point to the other, uh, we had a couple of significant events that I remember. Uh, number one is finding a, a community in Oklahoma. It's called Bowley, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. This was uh, 1904 when they established the black, completely black city. They had a black bank, they mm -hmm. had a black electrical company, uh, they had stores. They were all independent of the rest of <clears throat> It's just like Black society. Wall Street, huh? Uh, it's before Black Wall Street. Okay. okay. And uh, uh, the next experience I had with the Million Man March, mm -hmm. it was great. And above all is when we went to Africa. Okay. And actually saw uh, how Africa was in 1972. Mm hmm Okay. I thought it was like, you know, the TV had always promoted it as being part of the jungle, seeing all the animals. Right. Only right. animals I saw was in the zoo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Okay. And, uh, but one thing that I saw that disturbed me was the fact that even in Africa, we had the Lebanese and the Indians running all the businesses. Mm -hmm. And so that helped inspire me to keep going and doing my own thing. Okay. And, um, uh, again, we appreciate you being able to take the time to be with us today. And I just my wanted pleasure. to make the, the quick announcement about each year, uh, the, the last week in August, we have our Northeastern reunion at uh, is the Parian Park on Shane and Warren. And it's, uh, we're, so this is uh, the invitation to all Northeastern uh, alumni to come out and join us uh, the fourth week in August. Uh, join us in the park. Yeah, get there early yeah. to get a parking space. Yeah, cause it's it's going to, it's, fact, it's always a nice. A lot of brothers will come there with their motor homes yes. the night before. Tents. <laughs> and the night, it's a good right? time. Yeah. Yes. Brother Paul? I'm well, going to turn it back over to you. Well, I just want to say that we're thankful to uh, have Brother Chester and honor him while he yet lives. And we're thankful for Brother Lawrence X and X marks the spot to give us an opportunity as we get ready now for the 44th anniversary of African Liberation Day. We want to see your face in the place at our mm -hmm. museum. The Charles H. Wright Museum will be there both Saturday and Sunday, or Friday and Saturday, I'll get it straight. And we want to see your face there. And before we close, I want to thank my wife for being so supportive of me over the years mm -hmm. and putting up with my <coughs> travel <laughs> selling business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, you know you've been blessed. Cause yeah. She's your queen, and she's here with you even as we speak. Yeah. <laughs> so, again, uh, we're honored to be here today. So we, we thank you, and uh, we're going to take a break, and we're going to come back with more of the X Marks the Spot show. African Liberation Day 2017, Friday and Saturday, May 26th and 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, 315 West Warren Avenue. This year's theme, Reparations, Resistance, Rebellion, Liberation Through Education. Don't miss this two-day event, African Liberation Day 2017, May 26th and Saturday, May 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. This event is free.
on the T-shirts. And he made me, uh, in 1991, he made me a, a jacket. And it had the Keys Kids TV show, all the characters on the back. And everywhere I went, people would recognize the show. So he has really, truly been so inspirational in helping to spread the message. Uh, I started doing some consultant work for New Center Community Mental Health Services. We had a program called Project Resilience. Mm. And hundreds of kids came through that program. And they wanted shirts. Who do you think stepped up to the plate and made it possible for those children to have those shirts. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> now, he, see, I'm trying not to cry. Now he's really going to make it. showing one of those shirts. I want to present this oh to Mr. Willis. Goodness. It came out the archives. <laughs> it's been there for years. But you know, she inspired me to go on and do more of the same sort of thing. That's how I got to the, the point that I'm at right now. Oh my to goodness. raise the consciousness of the yes. kids, yes. okay, the community, yes. and the world. Mr. Willis, for you. The keys, kids, there's Danzy the Dinosaur, Sherry the Elephant, Zach the Lion, and Rennie the Bear. We will cherish this forever. I thank you so much for your love, for your support, and on behalf of all the children, <laughs> And we even got to the point where the parents and adults uh, would say, how can we get a shirt? We want a shirt. <laughs> so we started having shirts that say, I'm, I'm a supporter of the Keys Kids. I'm a parent of the mm -hmm. Keys Kids. And Mr. Vaughn not only would provide this, but he would actually attend many of the sessions with the children. And we would introduce them to him and would share with the kids his gift and talent of why they were able to have those nice shirts. So I will treasure this forever. This is history right here. Oh, yes. This yeah, is well, part of, again. It really came out of the archives. She didn't tell you this shirt is probably over 20 years old. Wow. This it's been that long. It's been that long, yeah. 20 years. Can well, you, you imagine? You know, that again speaks to who he is. Absolutely. What he is and, and how much commitment he's made to the community. And, and the other thing that came to mind just as we were talking here, you know, he's done all this kind of in the background. In the background. He's never Absolutely. out on stage, mm -hmm. never on TV, mm -hmm. never trying to wave his own banner. Mm -hmm. He is one who has committed himself to his community, to the children of his community, to the people of the community, and, don't, and not seeking a whole lot of publicity and no arrival. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, he has his lovely wife and family who loves him, and he's, he's shown us down through the years that He's not doing this just for the sake of what, financial gain or doing it for the sake of trying to be somebody mm -hmm. special. He's doing it out of love and respect for his community. Absolutely. And that's why we love Chester. And anytime we do something, we the Million Man Alumni, we the Inner City Sub Center, we the African Liberation Day Committee, we any other name we want to call, we always call Brother Chester. <laughs> because not only does he do great work, but he does it with a passion, with a passion. to make sure Absolutely. it is great work. Absolutely. And then he helps us Thank out at you. the last minute all the time. Too. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and so, I certainly and know about and, that. And, and, and if we have the money, we give it to him. And, and, and if we don't have the money, <laughs> and I guess his wife want to know about that. <laughs> But we love him. Yes, we uh, do. We respect him. Yes, we do. And he's had an impact on so many lives. Right? And, and she put up with me for the 30 or 40. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to stop there. I can't <laughs> keep going. Let me tell you about her and my daughter. Anytime that we were on vacation, she always got an attitude because I was stopping at all the businesses and giving them decals or buttons because <laughs> yes, you was always at work always, it's always at, at work. work yeah well you we got some of the pictures that we can show uh, uh can we show some of them on the screen uh some of the things that he's done there it is that's a symbol right the symbol of black dignity a black Absolutely. dignity the red one people the blood. one aim one destiny this came from marcus garvey yeah, my inspiration. I think we all know the red for the blood, the black for the race, the green for the land. We are an African people, Brother Chester Vaughn. You know, that was something we put on our car windows. We stuck that in our back windows or even in the front window. Now, the brothers that? Uh, that came to me at Northeastern wanted me to be their 
a sponsor for the Black Students Association. They gave me the idea and the concept to put all these decals everywhere they could. Wow, the Honorable that's Marcus Mosley Garvey. Absolutely. Mr. Vaughn certainly has a way of you give him a concept or a message, and he certainly knows how to bring that message alive. Oh, we just alive. had the button. You know, they sh briefly showed a button. There it is. Wow. Freedom it's by any means necessary. necessary. That's the brother Malcolm X, whose birthday we just celebrated. Uh, again, Brother Lawrence X, we love you for bringing us again, Absolutely. his brother today. By any means yes. necessary. To give him his respect. You Not know, he, only freedom, but liberation. Yeah. That's right. Now, that, was, that button was your own creation, right? You right. created that button. Yeah. And this is Blackness is Unlimited. According to my company name, it was Blackness, and then we put the ass in the middle. Because it is Blackness it is Unlimited. And we, we also did the liberation of Mother Africa when we were in South Africa and the other African countries were dominated by colonialism. We did Freedom Free Angela Davis. Wow. That was another message that had to be called. Right. We went down, the next one is land, the Africa, the flag, the fist, African land is power. Without land, you don't have power. And those were on bumper stickers, too, right? We put yeah, those on, those on bumper, bumper stickers. stickers. Right. Yes, I remember right. seeing those. And this is one of the Liberation Day shirts. And you know, we were blessed to have you do those shirts for us year after year. And now, this African town was on one of the back of that shirt. That's when we were pushing to have Detroit become African, African town. town. And we continued to struggle, but it went away someplace down the line. But the struggle continues. Now, We're this not is up. <laughs> the jewelry, which is made by my good partner and friend over the years, Al Saylor. Mm -hmm. This is Saylor made jewelry. And Miss Willis, you got a piece coming, but we're, oh, wow. we're going to take care of you. And also the pens, writing pens, and this is Al also frames pictures. So this is what we sell in terms of uh, some artwork. This is uh, Obama mm -hmm. custom-made frames. Now that's that's just tremendous work there. It is, absolutely. And, and, and we know now you got to give something to Miss Lawrence X, right? If you gave something to one, you gotta oh, yeah, you got, got give, you give got to show give something to Now this is to, the to back Lawrence of the African Liberation Day <laughs> shirt. This is the shirt that I'm wearing, and this was on the back. It deals with reparation now. Okay, this is a reproduction of one that we did in 1994. Mm. Uh, and of course, this is the red, black, and green flag, uh, which we hung everywhere and all, <laughs> every week we could, and as often as we could. Yeah, the red for the blood, the black for the race, the green for our motherland, absolutely, Africa. Absolutely, and, uh, absolutely. Brother Tess was instrumental in giving us that flag. If we ever need a flag for any occasion, and this where is, to find one. Now, this is a unique jewelry. If you look at it, it looks like ivory. It is ivory if you consider bone, wherever it comes from, to be ivory. If it's in Africa, it's called it, Af it, called it ivory. If it's in Detroit, we call it sailor made. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was nice. You know, we are so overwhelmingly honored Absolutely. to be here with a person such as Brother Chester Vine, yes. who has a skill set that is second to none. Absolutely. The kinds of things that he has done, continues to do, and, he, and his ability to go in partnership to work with others. Mm -hmm. Our brother Sailor and he have been together for years. They're like brothers, and yeah. they've mm -hmm. worked for us. They live down the street from me. <laughs> down you used to to come by and take me by the hand and take me to school. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, okay. That's one of my favorite lines. He used to take me to school. We all the same age. But at any rate, we're honored again, and we thank Brother Lawrence and X marks the spot yes. for allowing us to have an opportunity to give homage and pay respect to a brother who's been a leader and a teacher in our community over and over the number of years. Y'all, let's give another hand to Brother Chester Vaughn. We love him. We love you. That's what, uh, when, we, when he would come into the sessions with the kids and I would share with them the shirts that they have on, that you're going to meet the gentleman who actually made those shirts. And the kids are always fascinated. And we used to tell them, put your hands together and let's give Mr. Vaughn a great big round of applause. All the kids watching today at home and parents, yeah, we're right. going to close out this segment. We're giving him a round of applause and letting him know how much we love him and we appreciate your family for sharing you with us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. African Liberation Day 2017, Friday and Saturday, May 26th and 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, 315 West Warren Avenue. This year's theme, Reparations, Resistance, Rebellion, Liberation Through Education. Don't miss this two-day event, African Liberation Day 2017, May 26th and Saturday, May 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. This event is free. Again, this me? is Brother Paul Taylor, and we're here today in support of African Liberation Day, our day, our day in history. And we thank Brother Lawrence X and X marks the spot for allowing us an opportunity to make it shown and known that, yes, we are an African people. We're proud of our history. We're proud of our culture. And we celebrate our history and culture annually right here in the city of Detroit. And so we have joined us today Brother Lawrence X himself. He's here with us today. He's the founder of X Marks the Spot. He's the one who afforded us this opportunity, and we love him, we respect him, and we're just glad that he's here with us. And so I, I, I don't know if he wants to speak what he wants to speak now, or do we want Queen Mother, Queen Mother Ocean Dar, who's sitting here with us as well. You know, to have a Queen Mother who has traveled the world. All right. Been to Africa many, many times. All right. Done so many things for so many people here in the country of the United States of America. Jamaica. And certainly here in Detroit. <laughs> certainly in Jamaica. International. Internationally known. Worldwide. Worldwide. Mm -hmm. Not east side, not west side. <laughs> Best side. Worldwide. <laughs> Worldwide. Buckle up, y'all. Yeah, here she is, y'all. The Queen Mother. Yes, she is. Sister Queen Thank Mother Ocean Dara. Thank you kindly. Um, it's my pleasure and my honor to be in both of your presence today. Um, Lawrence, we really want to thank you for um, the committee of the African Liberation Day for you inviting myself and Paul and all the other members that are listening in to, the, to this program today, especially to uh, give honor and homage to those who have paid their dues. All right. We know that it would take seven days for us to remember all the names mm. of those ancestors, but there are s several ones each, each year, those who have uh, transcended or shall I say cross over to the other side, each year, um, African Liberation Day, we give homage to them and their families so that they will never be forgotten. So this year, um, we have four particular ones that we would like to um, give homage to because uh, we know that they work so diligently in our communities um, nationally and on international uh, level. Um, Chief Kamal Dajara um, was installed in uh, Nigeria on two different occasions. He worked in, um, in the community um, with several different groups uh, he had 12 children. He had um, all right. He had 
nine <laughs> sons and three daughters. He up there with RJ. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. Um, activists in the community, um, martial art, um, black belt artists, um, teaching the youth um, survival, and um, there were so many that um, gave honor to him. He had twelve, nine sons of his own, his own biological. But it was really amazing that when he transcended, there were over 40 young men that stood up to testify uh, boldly that he um, was looked upon as their father in the community. He uh, was also part of the uh, Pan-African Congress. He's, um, along with myself and many others, um, he was a part of that. and. Um, he worked at uh, Ford's. He retired at Ford's. He was one of the first one and the only black pipe fitter that um, had ever retired from Ford. And he was one of the uh, pioneers that came through. Was there something you wanted to ask me? Lauren? No. Oh, no, I'm just... Oh. Uh... Oh, just reflecting on him, huh? Yay, Bo. Yeah. He also Inside. did a lot with um, the Meta Natures. All right. Uh, he was one of the first ones. Now, you got to explain what that <laughs> is. Huh? Going back to um, ancient Kemet, um, Egypt, Africa, uh, bringing to the community um, the language, the arts uh, of our ancient ancestors. He was one of the first ones to start to teach in the city of Detroit about uh, the ancient uh, ancestors from all the way from Kemet to America. Because they used to say we didn't do nothing but hieroglyphics, but this was proven incorrect. Oh, most, most definitely. He uh, taught about those ancient ancestors that were in the Grand Canyon that was found in those um, Olmec civilizations that was same as found in La Vincia, uh, New Mexico, that they had found them in uh, Georgia. So um, we came before Columbus. Most definitely, Dr. Ivan Van Sturdeman. Most mm -hmm. definitely. So he's historically um, brought the community up, uh, especially the youth, uh, to teach them about the presence of our ancestors being on this side of the waters for thousands of years, and um, we we just really give homage to him for all the work. Uh, that he did. He did a lot with the elders in the community. Um, you know, Queen Mother, we have some others that you need to mention. I sure <laughs> well, I could talk all that. day on Chief Kamal. But I know there's plenty but, of others um, on yes, that list. Yes, okay. And uh, Sister Jindaye Gai, mm -hmm. uh, we all loved uh, Sister Jindaye. She was uh, one of the ones who, one of the sisters in the community that um, was a black belt um, expert you know, and she felt that the youth, particularly the women, should know martial arts and that all of them should be trained uh, self-defense. And um, she was the designer, fashion designer. And uh, when she and her family stepped out, there was no doubt about it. The um, community would always look to see who is that lady and who is that man and who is that family because that was the, the impact that uh, Sister Jendaye had on the community. Every year um, there was a head wrapping international show that was done in Dearborn and Sister Jendaye was one of the ones that was responsible for taking the photographs of the women on the international level and teaching them how uh, to do the head um, wrapping. Uh, she worked at all the international uh, schools, particularly the African-centered schools, and um, voluntarily she was uh, helping out. Uh, there's so much I could go and on and on. And we got three others that you need to mention, so. All right, okay, and um, we also are giving honor to Brother Abdul Rahim. Uh-oh. Yes. Brother Abdul Rahim uh -oh. was responsible for um, Ujamaan Associates. Yes, Ujamaan yeah. Associates. He was the president. It was he and Sister Joanne uh, Watson, uh, shall I say the Honorable Joanne Watson, that was responsible for allowing the black vendors to be throughout the city of Detroit. We fought, and she helped us to make that possible. 
Um, he was also responsible for Marcus Garvey um, at birthday celebration every month, uh, every every year, ju- every year in July on the seventeenth. We had a big celebration in the park. August, yes, we did. That's right. August, you got two others on. August. There Wait a minute, we got to say one more thing about Abdul Rahim. We yes. remember him and many Ethiopian white. Yes. And the righteous, righteous struggle they put on at the museum, African American Museum. Most definitely. So Abdul Rahim, we got some more. Yep. Yes, yes we do. We have um, we have Elder uh, Haru, who uh, worked with the Million Man uh, alumni, and he was also one of the experts that uh, taught about the Metanetters. Akibalan. Akibalan Village. Akibalan Village. Village, working with the youth. Yeah. Elder Fred Rita. Uh, yes. You know, we, yes. we got a we got a phone call. That's Wait, on we got one more. Uh, Ashiki, all right? <laughs> Man, we can, we can run him to 4 o'clock. We got time. <laughs> we rock this spot our, mm-hmm. until 4 o'clock, then RJ take it back over. All right. But one, we got one more, Paul. We got to get one more because that's a person Paul, here. I'm, I'm going to let you um, well, we, we, elaborate on well, uh, we, Brother we're Hill. We're honoring Brother J.D. Hill. Exactly. You Brother J.D. Hill has been a fundamental part of this station, fundamental part of our community. Uh, he was the mouth of the South, if you will. Go ahead. Who was always willing and wanting to be supportive of the various things that we were doing in the community. Uh, I praised the brother's name. I told his lovely wife and family that we would not let his legacy be in vain. And we wanted it to be shown and known that his spirit still lives. It lives in all of us here. The brother was adamant about the need to own and control resources in our community. Entrepreneurship was his major passion. And so we certainly want to honor that brother, Brother J.D. Hill. Ownership and in control. Brother Paul. Yes, sir. We want, we want. The EEOC. We Education. also want you to take a Ownership minute or two. We got control. Ashiki on the line, but we want you to take a minute or two. Explain to the audience how over the years, because we've been doing this for 44 years consecutively yes. in the city of Detroit. It's our tradition. But take two minutes and explain how we evolve to this great portion of ALD where every year on a Saturday, we lift up the ancestors. How do we get to this point? Because it's a fantastic element in addition to our ALD tradition. So could you explain to the audience how we actually got to where every year we honor ancestors? Well, we think it's truly important that we do that those persons who gave their life to our efforts to do what we need to do to free our people, that we never, never forget from whence they've come and the impact they had on our lives. And so we do this. Uh, This is the Memorial Day weekend, if you will, and we certainly want to memorialize our ancestors and our leaders and our teachers. And so while others are doing that in their culture, in their history, we certainly have a responsibility to do that in our history and culture as well. We just want to add one, one verse. We know people might get a little tight, but we honestly believe 100% that our ancestors are calling. Yes. And they keep asking us, why are we stalling when it's clear that the white supremacy system has fallen? And if you don't believe white supremacy has fallen, look at that ugly orange thing you got for a president. (laughs) I mean, we thank God they made the dumbest white man in America president. Our ancestors are calling. Yes, they are. And they want to know, why are we stalling? Because white supremacy has fallen. And And with that, we say, bam. Bam, y'all. Bam. 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 Dot know. biz. Yes. Brother Ashiki. Happy Freedom Saturday, brothers and sisters. Sister Oshindara, happy Freedom Saturday. Same to you, Ashiki. You know, you want to talk to us a little bit about BAM. Just tell us what it is and why it is so crucially important that we get involved with BAM, Black American Made. Well, brother... As you already know, and I want to make sure the audience knows, I'm honored to be on the program. Brother Lawrence X invited me. And just like the Brother Lawrence X just mentioned, why are we stalling? And bam, is simply, that's what we need to do. This is a drop the mic moment, brothers and sisters, like you drop the mic. Bam. Not around here. You better not drop no mic to RJ, Mike. You'll be cleaning floors for a week. (laughs) We don't drop no mic. We love you, Ashiki. (laughs) Come on. Right, right. We, we, with, with BAM, with BAM, Black American Made, we're showcasing black manufacturers. That's part of our history. 
That's part of our legacy. We've been making products since we've been on the planet. Yes, sir. And BAM is a reminder of the, the beauty and the grandeur and the glory and sophistication that we have as African people to make our own products. Now, to be a revolutionary, to celebrate ALD and all the brothers and sisters that are conscious, we got to understand it, it's, 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 it's crazy if we're going to talk about true freedom, but we're not using products made by black people. So BAM is about us getting back to what we got to do. We got to buy black American-made products. And the reason why we got to do it, not only do we honor the ancestors when we do that, but we create jobs and business opportunities for our own people because we can no longer afford to be part-time revolutionaries. Most of our revolutionaries, we don't work for black people. We got to keep it real. Most of us work for other folks. So BAM is about creating jobs for our people so we can hire our children. Ashiki, how we, do they... we showcase through BAM.biz. The All website right. is BAM.biz. There you go. Right now we have thousands of products, thousands made by black folks. We got shoes, we got clothes, we got food, we got skin care products, we got hair care products, we got furniture. We got all kind of products made by black folks. So we want to get everybody to say they conscious, not to just talk it. We got to walk it. So if you're really conscious with your African name and going to Africa, all oh, that's wonderful. But if you're not buying black made products, we playing games. So BAM is to stop, is to get us to stop playing games. Right now, this weekend, black folks going to spend money this weekend on products that are not made by black people. So when you go to BAM.biz, we have quality. I want to emphasize that. We have quality products made by black folks at BAM, B-A-M.biz, black American made, B-A-M.biz. Brother Ashiki. So we encourage everybody to go to the site. You're going to be blown away when you see all the products we make. We got people making all kinds of products. Brother Ashiki, we got, yes, two minutes, brother. we got two minutes left in this segment. You must, for the benefit of us, please preview Ken Bridges. Give us two minutes on our brother. He's also a Detroit Public School alumni. Give us two minutes as we look forward in the future to dealing well, with brother our ancestors. Ken Bridges, brother Ken Bridges was my mentor, dear friend. As you mentioned, Lawrence X, brother Ken Bridges is from Detroit. Went Central, to Central High School. High School. Lynn Wood. Uh, his family <laughs> lived in Detroit for years. This brother was Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, and Dr. King rolled into one. Oh. If you don't know who Ken Bridges was, do a Google search, make it a homework assignment for the children. Ken Bridges, you need to learn about this brother. This was Marcus Garvey, Malcolm, and Dr. King rolled into one. So we need to honor this great brother because if it wasn't for not for Ken Bridges, BAM would not exist. Black American Made would not exist if it wasn't for Brother Ken Bridges. Uh, he's the spirit of what I'm doing right now. I'm a manufacturer myself. Some of y'all know about my product, Ice Supreme. Ice Supreme. Ken Bridges was a, was the inspiration behind Ice Supreme as well. They need so some of it now, we need bro. To honor our ancestors, as Queen Ocean Diary reminded us. We got to honor the ancestors, otherwise we playing games. And all of us, we're we're going to be the elders. We're going towards being elders, so we don't have time to play. We need to get all of our people to give and buy black. We need to buy black made products because if we're sitting here today. We're wearing clothes that's not made by black people. We're wearing skin care products not made by black people. We're wearing hair care products not made by black people. We're playing games. So I just I, want to encourage everybody to go to BAM, B-A-M.biz. Go you, to BAM.biz. Check out all the products. Bro, we you need got to some, sign up to support what we're doing. Get on our mailing list. It's free. Bro, you got some hell of a DNA in you, man. <laughs> we, we can tell you, a, you, you a tailor, a Zaire. A, 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 He's a tailor. A vibrations of right? feel in him. That's my brother, y'all. And, and but on a, on a serious tip, though, my brother is a native Detroiter. He now lives in Atlanta, but he's never forgotten his roots. He understands that he's committed to his people here in Detroit, and he keeps telling me that he wants and needs the people in Detroit to sign up and join BAM. And he keeps telling me that, Brother Paul, all the people you know and everybody that knows you, you got to get more people to sign. So I'm telling those of us who are in listening audience here, y'all help me out. Y'all sign up for BAM with my brother, Ashiki, because hey, this is a... You got it. Hey, Ashiki, 
Yes, Ashiki, my brother. You owe us one, man. We're looking for you to come to Detroit at least by Cyber Cyber Day in July. So you owe us one. God bless you. Thank you for calling in. So we're looking to get you up in the city because you know you ain't got to do nothing but come up I-75. And the firstborn in here, he the mayor of I-75. <laughs> so the mayor of I-75 going to give you a free pass. So we look to see you. God bless you, bro. Thank you, all brother. Give him that, give him that, that email address right. one more all time. Right, brother Paul, we'll talk later. All right. The website. Right. Give him that website. First. What is it? Bam. Bam.biz, B-A-M.biz, bam. Sign up, y'all, right now. Here today. Hey, hey, firstborn, somebody help us. How much time we got left in this? Because we don't even want to bump. How much time we got left in the whole? We got six minutes. Paul, yes, we got to talk about what we're doing Friday night. Friday night, we got one of the greatest organizers of our people alive today, Dr. Ron Daniels. Give us something in Queen. We got Paul take about two, three minutes. Queen take the last three minutes. But Paul, right now, ALD, 44 years deep. We steeped 44 years deep in African liberation. No other city has been doing it for 44 years. Brother Paul, take you two. Then Queen, we're going to let you take us out. Well, we're honored to have Brother Ron Daniels, who many of us know has been on the front line working toward our liberation, working toward our reparations. All right. He was part of Reparations Raise Organization. All right. And we know that they owe us In a debt that's unpaid. You've got to still be paid. And so he's going to be our guest speaker for Friday night. Again, Friday the 26th at our museum, the Charles Wright Museum. We are calling all of us who are African and we know it and ain't ashamed to show it to be there. It's free admission. There's no charge this year at all to come. We want to fill the place up. There'll be others on the panel discussion as well. Uh, Brother John Conyers, who's the one who gave us the reparations bill Wait to go minute. to Congress, the is L also going to be dean. there. The dean. The dean. Thank you. The, the dean. dean. The dean will be there as well. Other House uh, of Representatives. Yes, yes. So the we're dean. calling brothers and sisters. And, you know, it would be good to bring some of the young adults as well, you all. Bring some young folks, too, because we got to continue this legacy even after we're gone. And so it's free admission. Uh, come prepared to support the vendors. We got to buy black. We'll have some ice supreme right there on display, and, and other vendors will be there as bro, well. We're not going to have Queen Mother Joanne Watson giving us that eye. You better get a slogan, bro. <laughs> you ain't gave a slogan all day. Come on with the slogan. Help me because I'm having a mental <laughs> little slaps right now. Uh -oh. What's the slogan? Come on, Queen Mother. If you don't know what I hey, – we got it. Come on. What's the slogan of ALD 2017? Somebody. Help us, Lord. Somebody got to help us. Reparations. Reparations. Resistance. 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 Rebellion. Rebellion. Oh, that's the slogan for sure. What's the rest of it? The rest of it. Oh, Liberation sure. through education. All right. Uh -huh. All right. That's the slogan. Hey, you got, uh -huh. you got uh, Jimmy Black Man Rutherford singing reparations about the house on the hill and the Coupe de Ville. Oh, that would be so nice. We need to call that brother up trying to come, come sing on. reparations. Come on. Come on out, Black Man. Queen yeah, Mother. Well, we are going to have uh, poetry reading. We'll have. African dance and drama. I mean, it's going to be How many a minutes show. we got left here, y'all? Two minutes. Queen All right. Mother Oshidar, bump us We uh, say, come on down. Out. Come on down. United we stand. That it's time for us to practice the principles of, um, of Kwanzaa, the Nguzi Saba. And the first principle is Umoja, which is unity. All right. So we cannot make it um, by ourselves. So we're looking forward to the youth, who is the future of our society and the elders that are the backbones to pull it together and come on down to the museum and support what we're trying to put together. This is our 44th um, anniversary African and so of African Liberation Day. So all of you who are sitting back at home and waiting for the youth to come out, you need to come on down too. So we need everyone's support to come out because this is a free um, event that is taking place. So. We just Come doing a little down. good. We doing a little good. In the neighborhood. All right. Yes. You know, I just want to close out again by thanking Brother Lawrence X and the X Master Spot family, his lovely wife, for this opportunity to come on TV today to tell you about our history, our culture, to give homage to a brother like Chester Vaughn. Oh, yeah. And, and, and mm -hmm. to say to our community that together we stand, divided we fall. If we all come out in harmony and unity, there's no limit to what we can do. And we hope to see your face in the place. And, Paul, you, you, you just, you the ratings <laughs> record. You, re, you broke the records because you got Queen Mother Oshadara with us. Yeah, you, you know I had to call and she was on her way. And we got to say for people like Minsa Salim and Fold 7, 
one God, one aim, one aim, and one destiny. One destiny. Bump us on out of here. African Liberation Day 2017, Friday and Saturday, May 26th and 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History, 315 West Warren Avenue. This year's theme, Reparations, Resistance, Rebellion, Liberation Through Education. Don't miss this two-day event, African Liberation Day 2017, May 26th and Saturday, May 27th at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. This event is free.